Okay, so today we're going to start taking a look at our individual dimension styles and what each of the tabs in that dimension style represents and then take a look at how to create new dimension styles and how to edit dimension styles that are already in our drawings. And so to go ahead and get into your dimension style manager, if you just open a new drawing and then once you get your new drawing open, come to the home tab on the ribbon, come over to annotation, click on annotation and your dimension style manager is kept right there. It's the second icon down. Go, go ahead and click on dimension style. It'll bring up your dimension style manager and we're just going to take a look at this standard style. So just go ahead and click on standard. Over here on the right you can see that you've got a few options. Set current. If you set a dimension style current that means that any dimensions, any new dimensions that you create will be part of that dimension style. They will, That dimension style will be used to create those. Uh, we can click on new that will make a copy of what we whatever selected on the left to create a new dimension style we've got modify we'll edit the dimension style that's selected and then we're also going to take a look at override here in a little while so go ahead and click on standard click on modify and you'll see across here we've got a number of tabs running across the top of our dimension style and so these are the tabs we're going to take a look at today so if we just click on lines you'll see here in this first section this is only pertains to our dimension lines. Our dimension lines are the lines that are associated with the text. And so we really don't don't change too many of these. The one thing we do want to change is on our baseline spacing. We're going to change that to be 0.375 so that it's 3 eighths of an inch. What baseline spacing is is there's a command in AutoCAD to create baseline dimensions and when you use that it will automatically create each additional dimension string to be three-eighths of an inch apart when printed. And so we'll be taking a look at that uh, later on down the road. Our suppress dimension line one, suppress dimension line two, if you just click in one of those check boxes and then watch your graphic up here, it'll show you what it's going to do. Uh, it just turns off the first dimension line on every dimension that you create. Then dimension line two, same thing. So just toggle those buttons and then go back to so whether they are cleared and then we'll take a look at extension lines so this information here at the bottom only pertains to extension lines extension lines are the lines that extend off of the object so here we have kind of that same options we've got an option to suppress extension line one suppress extension line two so you can toggle those back on and off make sure that they're cleared when you get done and then the information that we want to change is extend beyond dimension lines that is set up as a drafting standard and should be 0.125 so go ahead and change extend beyond dimension lines to be 0.125 that's this distance from where the arrowhead is to where the extension line stops so we want that to be an eighth inch when printed Okay. so go ahead and change that and then we'll click on symbols and arrows and we'll go through here under arrowheads we're going to use closed filled arrowheads but you can click in that little drop list arrow and see all the different options that you have available to you you know, a couple that we will take a look at would be our datum triangle filled. When we use geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, we'll use our datum triangle filled. Also, if we're uh, putting a leader on our part, we'll use a small dot to do that. In architecture, we use the little slash marks. So we've got our architectural tick. Just go ahead and click on close filled and leave those that way for now. Arrow size, we'll change it to be 0.125 and that'll be the size of your arrowhead when printed. Center marks, we draw our own, so make sure that center marks is set to none. Our dimension break, uh, this is another command in AutoCAD that we can run that when we automatically create breaks, this is the parameter that is uh, tied to that dimension break. And so again, that's another command I'm gonna show you how to use here later on. We want that to be set to 0.125, so we'll leave it alone. Arc lengths we rarely ever use, radius jog dimension we rarely ever use, and linear jog we rarely ever use it. So just leave those set the way they are. Go ahead and click on the text tab. Under the text tab we have our text style and so since we've got some styles created now in our template we can go ahead and select those. This is going to be an associative text style so we can go ahead and select SATC associative and then our text height, we want that to be an eighth inch when printed, so we'll change that to be 
and then under vertical placement uh, this under your text placement we've got some options and if you just watch your graphic up here as you mess around with these you'll kind of see what it's doing so this is where it's going to be the text will be placed and so when it's vertical it can be centered we can place it so that it's above so it's above our dimension line placed outside to where it's outside of our dimension line or below so it's below the dimension line we're going to go ahead and leave this as centered but some of your homework uh, this will be one of the parameters that you'll have to know how to use and how to manipulate to get your text to be say for instance if you want it to be above and your dimension line so go ahead and change it back to centered same thing with horizontal you'll see a few options in here you can have add extension line one and that places that text where it's down at extension line one same thing for extension line two and then finally over extension line one that'll put it next to your first extension line or right next to your second extension line and again go ahead and change that back to centered that's the way most of our drawings are going to be done and then we take a look at view direction whether we're viewing this from left to right or right to left which just makes them upside down okay? your text placement for offset from dimension line that should be 0.09 that's the way it's set by default also text alignment you've got horizontal if you click on aligned with dimension line that lines up your text so that when you are creating dimensions your text will be in line with your arrowheads and again for majority of what we do we're going to use our horizontal text alignment and then the last thing to talk about in here is sometimes you'll see drawings that have a frame drawn around their text and so here's where that option is if you ever need to create a dimension with a frame around it you find it there here on the text tab under text appearance you can just check that box so be sure and clear that and then we'll take a look at fit on the fit tab I rarely ever mess around with any of these. You've got different fit options that you can play around with if you don't like the way that your dimensions are being displayed. You have some fit options here. Also some text placement options of, of what to do when that dimension is being placed. Really the one option that I mess around with most on fit is our scale for our dimension features. And so our use overall scale of use overall scale of will be set to whatever the scale for your drawing is so if you scaled up your tile block by a factor of two your use overall scale will always match whatever you scaled your tile block by and so if we scaled it up by a factor of two we would change this to two by default we're going to leave that as one and that's just a one of the parameters in our dimension style manager that we've got to go in and update as we scale drawings and then the last thing is under fine tuning we've got some options to place the text manually or we can draw a dimension line between extension lines and leave those unchecked also then the last one we're going to take a look at right now is going to be primary units if you click on primary units under linear dimensions so whenever you create a linear dimension you've got some options here your unit format uh, the two that we use primarily is going to be our decimal or fractional will be the two that we're going to use uh, here in this class and so more of your drawings are going to be decimal dimensions so I'd go ahead and leave that as decimal for now and then also you've got unit precision this is how many places behind the period that you want to be shown on your dimensions and this will always be given to you by me I will specify how many places I want to be shown uh, but this is where you would change it so most of the time it's going to be two places so we'll go ahead and set our pre precision to be 0.00, .00 our decimal separator we've got an option to be a period a comma or a space just go ahead and leave that as a period our rounding values leave it alone and if we wanted to add a, a prefix if we wanted to add information to all of our dimensions then we would type that in this prefix box say we wanted to put an R before all of our dimensions then we do it there and you can see where your prefix is going to go prior to your dimension and also if there was a suffix we wanted to add to all of our dimensions then we would put our inch marks for instance we would use that as a suffix and it will add inch marks to the back of all of our text okay we don't want any prefixes we don't want any suffixes so go ahead and delete those off 
you've got measurement scale. Uh, one thing about this measurement scale, this is a scale factor, so it's going to take whatever information's up here and it's going to multiply by your scale factor. So we hardly ever, 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 usually never change this. Measurement scale, your scale factor will always be one. What this does is if you create a dimension and if you add it, if you have this scale factor set to be a two, it's going to take all of your dimensions and it's going to take the size of that dimension, take it times two. Okay, so this we always want it to be one because we draw everything full size in our drawing. Okay, last couple of boxes here we've got zero suppression. We can uh, suppress leading zeros or suppress trailing zeros. So if you watch up here, if you click the box for leading zeros, you'll see here on this dimension that's less than an inch that it takes the zero off that's to the left of the decimal point. And then also trailing zeros, if you click on trailing zeros, you'll see the zero that's to the right of the decimal, it will be taken off. So majority of your dimensions, you're going to suppress leading zeros, but trailing zeros, you want them to go ahead and be shown. So go ahead and check the box for leading, but leave trailing cleared. And then the last thing, our angular dimensions, our unit format is going to be decimal degrees. We'll see we've got some other options available in there. And precision, I'm going to go ahead and set it to be to, to two places. And then what I can do is suppress my trailing zeros. That way my angles will always be to the be rounded up if it's a 45 degree angle. If it's perfect, it's going to show as being 45. Where if I have that turned on, if I have the trailing turned off, I mean you're going to see decimal points, two decimal places after that, and that's not what we want. So go ahead and under zero suppression, go ahead and do trailing, and then we'll hit OK. And now those changes have been made to that standard style. So we can go ahead and hit close here. And let's go ahead and save these changes back to our template. So just go ahead and do a save as. Under files of type, change your files of type to be a .dwt. Select your ACAD template. Go ahead and hit save. When it asks, do you want to replace it? Hit yes. In your template options, hit OK. And now you've made some changes to that dimension style and you've saved them back to your template. So now every time you open your template, you'll be able to go to your home tab on your ribbon, come on over to your annotation panel, click on dimension style, and those changes will have been made and kept there for your standard style.